What's up everyone? Today I'm gonna to share 10 Lightroom tips with you that I use every single day. Now these tips aren't going to turn you into the next Peter McKinnon, but they will help elevate your edits to the next level and speed up your workflow. Now, depending on your skill level or experience, you may know some of these and you may know none of them. That's all right, that's the beauty of Lightroom. It's a massive program and that's my favorite part about it is they've got all these little tips and nuggets and secrets inside the program that I love to find. So I went through my list of all these little tips and secrets that I know and pulled out my 10 favorite things to teach to you guys today. So with that, let's jump into number one. One. All right, so I know this isn't a hidden tip or even a secret that I'm hiding or hoarding to myself, but I get asked all the time, how can I speed up my edits? And the number one tip I give people is to use hotkeys. It doesn't seem like it'll do much, but if you save two seconds using one hotkey and you factor that into editing a 500 image wedding gallery, two seconds per hotkey is gonna shave off like 16 minutes from your editing time. Now you add in like maybe using five hotkeys, now you're talking about shaving off like an hour and a half of your editing time from one wedding gallery. That's a massive difference. Now, here's where the hidden tip comes in. In library, if you hit command forward slash, it will pull up this menu and it will show you all of the shortcuts that are in this module. So here we've got all of these amazing developed shortcuts that you can learn and use. And to get rid of this menu, all you simply do is click and it will disappear. Now, my personal favorite hotkeys to use are syncing. I sync all of my edits all the time. Cropping, the brush tool, the clone tool, and I use the grid view all the time. So if I need to jump from my develop module into the library module, hit G on the keyboard and that will pull you right into the library module in the grid view. I challenge you to learn all of these hotkeys and start using them and you'll notice it shaving time off of your editing. So tip number one, use your dang hotkeys. Tip number two is resetting sliders. This is another tip that's aimed at helping you save time off of your editing. You ever pulled up your brush tool and all of its settings are jacked up from the last time you used it? No? Just me? Well, regardless, it will happen to you. And even if you don't have that issue, knowing how to reset your sliders quickly and easily will save you time with your editing. Rather than trying to drag your slider to zero or clicking the field and typing in a zero, all you have to do is double click the slider, boom, resets it to zero. Let me show you. So in the develop module, if you come over and let's say I wanted to reset my highlight slider to zero. Sure, I could grab this and try to drag it to zero. I don't have time for that. Rather than doing that, double click on the slider and it will reset it to zero. Now here's one of those jacked up brushes I was talking about. I hate when I pull up my brush tool and it remembers the settings that I used it from like five times ago. So rather than going through and double clicking all of these sliders to reset them, if you double click effect, it will reset the entire brush tool. So double clicking any of the sliders resets it and it saves your sanity. Moving on. Tip numero three. Clearly I don't speak Spanish, but tip number three is changing your zoom amount. I legit used Lightroom for like four years before I learned this trick. And when I learned it, I was so flipping mad because I could have been using this and it's super useful. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so up here on the left hand side in your navigator panel, you'll notice a drop down right here where you can change your zoom amount. So if I wanted to zoom in 11 to one ratio so I could do some detail work, I can zoom in that far and really look at the individual pixels and do detail work. And this will save that as your default zoom amount. So the next time you go to zoom in, it will be that much. If you just wanna get it back, just drop it down to whatever mode you like to keep it in for the zoom. So if you ever need to do detailed work like retouching skin or putting some brushes on eyes, change your zoom amount and make it easier on your life. Tip number four is toggling your before and after. 
If you're like me and you ever second guess your editing, toggling your before and after will give you some peace of mind. And it's really nice to see just how far your edits come and seeing if you've gone too far. So to do this, all you need to do is hit the backslash key. And up here in the top right hand corner, it will show you if it's showing you the before image. And if there's nothing there, that means you're viewing the after image. So I like to toggle this just to see how far I've gone and if I've changed any of the colors too much. Use this tool all the time. So use this frequently to just check your edits and see how far you've gone and if you've pushed the image too far. Tip number five is the targeted adjustment tool. And this is one of those tools that Lightroom just throws in there and doesn't tell anybody like, what? This is like the most useful tool in Lightroom and nobody even knows it's there. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, this tool pops up in a couple places, but first I'm gonna show you it in the HSL panel of Lightroom. It's this little bullseye looking tool right here. And if you click on it, and since I'm in the saturation, it's going to affect saturation and I can scroll over anywhere in Lightroom and it will sample that area and change that saturation. So if I click and hold right here, it's going to sample that area and I can desaturate that. And you'll notice under the saturation panel, it's noticing it's mostly blues with a touch of aqua. And that's what makes this tool so nice is it gets all of the colors there, not just one color. This tool is super useful if you ever need to correct skin tones. So if you click this and sample their face, you can then change the hue or the saturation of their face. Right? Crazy. This feature is super useful using the hue tool and you can change the hue of their skin and make it more pink or more warm and yellow. So this is how you get those dreamy, gorgeous, warm skin tones. This is my favorite tool to use when I'm having issues with my skin tones. I'll grab the target adjustment tool, change it to hue, sample their face and drag it up or down until I can really dial in their skin tones and get the color that I am looking for. No more guessing if their skin is orange, red or yellow. Lightroom will do the work for me and I don't have to guess anymore. Moving on. We all know what a vignette is, right? Yes, I know it's vignette, but when I spell it, I have to call it a vignette so I remember how to spell it right, because that's not how you say it. Anyway, a vignette is super nice to pull focus into the center of the image, but what if your subject isn't in the center of the image? That's where radial tools come in. This is how you add focus using a radial tool. So you'll come up and grab your radial tool and I'm going to make sure it's not inverted and I'm gonna pull my feather up to 100, drop it around my subject and darken everything around it. And boom, just like that, I've added focus using a radial filter. Watch the before and after. Super useful if you have a busy background or something crazy going on, or you just wanna make the picture more dramatic and add focus to a certain area. Now you've got custom vignetting wherever you want it in the photo. Just don't take it too far like we used to in the 80s. You know when you're editing a session and you land on that one photo and you're just like, ah! That's the one. I'm gonna put that on the gram. I'm gonna watch the likes come in. It's gonna be great. And then you finish editing your session and you forgot what photo it was that you wanted to post. Not anymore. All you gotta do is slap the five on your keyboard and it will rate the image of five stars and then you can go back after and find those images. Let me show you. This is it. This is the picture that I want to post on the gram tonight. So. I hit the five on the keyboard and it set the rating to five stars. Now, when you're done with your session, if you come over here to filters and change it to rated and then change it to five stars, it will sort all the other images out and just show you the five star rated image. You can export those bad boys into a separate folder and you've got all your marketing content right there at your fingertips. This is super nice when you're editing because you don't have to change modules, you don't have to export anything, just hit the five and keep on in your groove and when you're done editing, then you can go through and grab all those images that you wanted to export for marketing.
Tip number eight, virtual copy. Have you ever seen like a crazy haircut or like a super cool tattoo and you wish you could just like take a clone of yourself and put it on the clone and see if it even looked good before you did it? Well, that's what this is like. While I'm editing, occasionally I'll come across an image and I wanna try like a crazy edit or throw a black and white or something on it. Rather than jacking up my original image, I'll just create a virtual copy, try whatever crazy harebrained idea I have on it, and if it looks good, cool, we'll keep it. If not, delete it and it's gone. But this is a great way to try something crazy without affecting your original images. So, to create a virtual copy, all you need to do is hit Command Apostrophe and it should pop up right after your image. And once it does, then you can go in there and try some crazy presets. You can turn it to a black and white. You can do whatever you want to it. And it should pop up right after your image. If that doesn't happen, it's because your sorting has changed. So in the library module, come down to sort and make sure it is on capture time and it will go back to the correct order. I also use this anytime I want to give a client a black and white photo. I'll go through all my images, find the ones I want to be black and white, create a virtual copy, and make sure to give my clients the color version and the black and white version of those images. And since we're talking about black and whites, Tip number nine is black and white mix. If you've ever turned an image black and white and it just loses its oomph, it's just kind of bleh, can't even tell what the subject is anymore, you need to be using the black and white mix tool. Let me show you. So I've got this image that's black and white and you'll notice anytime you turn an image black and white, the HSL panel turns to black and white. So here, the groom's wearing a blue suit, and right now it just looks like there's a random hand floating in the image. So I want to increase the exposure of his suit, and that's what the black and white mix does. It increases the exposure of whatever the original colors were in the image. So if I slide blue up, you can see his suit starts to brighten up, and now we have a groom, not just a ghost hand. This tool also comes in handy if you want your subject to stand out. Let's say you take a photo of somebody standing in a super green field, turn it black and white, and they just get lost. Go to your black and white mix, pull down that green slider, and it will darken all of the green, and your subject will be the main point of focus again. Last but not least, tip number 10, changing your crop orientation. Have you ever been editing an image and there's something that you need to remove and you're like, nah, I'm gonna just crop that out. Yeah, me too, I do it all the time. But the Lightroom crop tool can kind of be frustrating sometimes. Sure, you can grab the corner and drag it all the way over and try to change its orientation, or you can use this tip. All right, so on this image, using my hotkey R to go to cropping, I like it, but I feel like the window is distracting. I really want her to stand out. So rather than grabbing this corner and dragging it and switching it and recropping it, I don't want to worry about any of that jazz. If you hit X while your crop tool is pulled up, shamma lama ding dong, it changes your crop orientation and you're done. Super simple, super easy, should save you some headaches in the future. No more wrestling with the crop tool anymore and adding one more reason to the list why we're mad at Adobe. And there's my 10 Lightroom tips and tricks for you. Hopefully you guys learned something new. If you did, smash that like button. Subscribe to me if you haven't already. I'm gonna be pumping out content like crazy coming up. And follow the link in my bio to go to my Lightroom course and sign up for the email list so when it launches, you're the first person to know. And I will see you guys in the next video. In that light, mm -mm. frick, gotta look at the camera. Oh, <laughs> tip number four. Nope, <sighs> frickin' it. Moving on. Oh gosh, hit my microphone. Shoot. Uh, if you want your sub tool out.